Hey you. Yes you, the YouTube watchaholic. You should probably stop scrolling through the YouTube algorithm. But only until this watch video is over. Oh, hello and welcome to the first video on the time ticker. So on this channel you can expect world class watch reviewers to provide you with world class watch content like this. Basically, on this watch channel, unlike some other watch channels, I'm not going to tell you that a $500 watch is super inexpensive. Instead, I'm going to be reviewing watches that I can actually afford and analyzing some that I can only do once. And the goal of this watch channel is to learn and grow with my audience, uh, learn about the watch hobby, this mystical watch hobby and the watch industry that takes up so much of our livelihoods and thing and uh, these little machines that we find uh, so much joy in. Hopefully on this watch channel, um, as I learn and grow, uh, I will be able to see these watches that I've only dreamt of uh, in the flesh. So I invite you to come on this wonderful journey with me on the time ticker. This Casio was my first real watch and thanks to it, every time I see a watch, my bank balance mysteriously decreases. It has a stainless steel bracelet a Casio digital movement that I'll get to a little bit later, but it actually runs around plus one seconds per day, which is extremely accurate for a mechanical watch. This is a quartz watch, which means it runs off battery and it's pretty light at 55 grams. It has a water resistance that is 30 meters, but honestly, Casio kind of underplays what this can do because it can definitely go deeper than 30 meters. I'm not recommending that, I'm just saying. And um, this has a mineral crystal. You know, all the watch YouTubers say that when you see the scratches, they remind you of a memory. And instead of getting a cool scratch that I actually wanted to get, I was actually skateboarding outside. The trucks on the front of my skateboard fell off and then I scraped this mineral crystal on the pavement. So, I mean, I guess all battle scars are battle scars, so. So, if you happen to pick up one of these Casios and you meet up with your Rolex buddy, hopefully you can act out this seat. So yeah, I got this Casio and it costs less than your coffee. And it's, it's great. Well, actually, I got this Rolex. It is amazing. In fact, I had to sell my arm for it. But you know what, it was totally worth it. Look at this Rolex, the sweeping seconds hands on the dial. It is so, so accurate. You know, it's plus five seconds per day or so. And it has a date complication. It could never, ever be outdone by your measly Casio. Well, actually, instead of waiting two years on a long waiting list, I picked this up at the local Walmart and I have 10 times more functions than your Rolex has. Look at this. It has a day date complication right on the first page. And then once you click it, you have an alarm, you have a stopwatch. Now remind me of how much all of those features would cost on all of your Rolexes. At the end of the day, all of those Rolexes wouldn't be eight millimeters thick and $25. I'm gonna need those from you. From the wise words of Nico Leonard and the rest of the watch community, Casio is truly God tier. I had noticed that the A-roll for the next watch I'm about to talk about kind of got deleted. I will be re-recording it on the floor with this amazing makeshift lavalier microphone because I noticed that the audio from the other clips, um, let's say, weren't world-class. Let's talk about a not-so-world-class automatic watch. So it was my first automatic watch. I had a great experience with the Casio and I was looking to go to the next step. And the next step, naturally, is an automatic watch. All of the YouTubers, they drool over their automatic watch because of that sweeping second hand, that sweet, 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 me being the cheapskate I am. I decided to try to find the cheapest automatic watch I could find because, you know, What's the difference between a $30 automatic watch and a $2,000 one? I found this watch. It's called the Oaksen watch. I'm not even sure if that's how you pronounce it. It's a Chinese watch trying to pose as some like fancy sounding uh, watch brand. It's really not. So it arrived in the mail for what, like $30 in total, which is very, very cheap. First of all, it's 14 millimeters. And again, me being the noob I am in this space, I really didn't believe the watch YouTubers when they said there's a huge, huge difference between 12 millimeters and 14 millimeters. And my goodness, 
were they right? I, I should have taken their advice. I, it was huge on my wrist. It doesn't fit properly. It's not sleeve friendly whatsoever. It's made of some sort of aluminum alloy or brass alloy. I'm not sure. It's not disclosed. So I'm just, you're just gonna have to guess, I guess. Uh, it's not good. It's fully polished. The crystal is made of glass. If it shatters, you're gonna get glass everywhere. The funniest part of all of this, which is actually the sweeping second hand or lack thereof. I was so excited. You know, I was willing to take the caveats of this watch if I could just see that sweeping second hand. I did not get to see that sweeping second hand because once I wound it up, the sweeping second hand staggered across the dial and it was just as new to sweeping as I was in this watch hobby. This watch is a cautionary tale to all the, I would say, extreme cheapskates. Again, I'm kind of part of that club, so no offense, I love this club. Um, I would say that you should probably save up a little bit more if you're looking for an automatic watch or get some other watch, but please avoid the ones that are, let's say, under $60 Canadian. The watches there are really not worth it. The materials are poor, the quality standards are poor you're not gonna get your money back and it's gonna end up in your drawer um, because that rhymes you're not gonna want to wear it. it's not gonna be an enjoyable experience and you can't sell it because nobody wants your $30 watch not being able to use a $30 watch does not mean that you save money in fact it just means that you wasted $30 so again you should probably save up your money and get the next watch I'm about to tell you about I was looking for a Seiko watch in the US Seiko watches cost around $130 which is doable um, however, in Canada, the price disparities are vastly different. I actually picked up an homage. I know, I know it's a problem. Some people seriously don't like homages. I used to have some sort of gripe with them because they kind of imitate something that they aren't. Um, however, this was actually the cheapest way to get a Seiko NH35 in Canada. So this was about $80 or so. Try to name me a watch in Canada that's available for $80 and gives you a Seiko NH35. I'm pretty sure you can't. This one is a Pagani, which is basically an homage to the Rolex Yachtmaster. It's not a direct homage because I actually got it on a Jubilee bracelet, whereas the Yachtmaster only comes on a oyster style bracelet. Also, there is no accented second hand, but I'm pretty sure that's, those were cost saving measures. However, uh, at the end of the day, it really doesn't look too much like a uh, Yachtmaster and the dial itself is a bit different. There's some nuances there. Um, I think it's different enough to justify that it's not a direct copy. It actually does sweep across the dial. Thank goodness it doesn't stagger anymore. And this is around, around 12 millimeters thick. So it does fit over most cuffs. Um, or sleeves. And um, this actually has a diving bezel, 60 clicks that is. Um, it is unidirectional, so it's not bi-directional like the Yacht Master. But once again, a cost-cutting measure. It doesn't perfectly align with the dial itself, which could be a deal breaker for some, but again, it's not too much of a deal breaker for me. And um, in terms of magnetism, I've used it on top of laptops. It doesn't get magnetized easily. It is pretty accurate. I measured around plus five to plus 10 seconds a day. It really depends on the orientation of the watch. Uh, the Jubilee bracelet is slightly comfortable. It's not as comfortable, of course, as the original Rolex. Uh, Jubilee bracelet. However, um, compared to most of these watches around this price range, uh, these are solid end links, uh, solid links, solid, solid stainless steel links, and a solid stainless steel body. So again, you're getting some pretty good bang for your buck. However, I do have to mention that the the micro adjust is close to impossible. And I've done it with my other Pagani watch and it worked okay, but this, I just can't get it off. So I think there is something wrong with this watch. Speaking to the durability of this, um, on this bottom right-hand corner, there is a giant gouge. I dropped this on a concrete floor and actually it's still running fine. I can't personally attest to uh, your experiences about the durability of this watch, but I've experienced uh, some pretty um, interesting things with this watch and it has stood the test of time. It is an open case back. The bezel is supposedly ceramic. I don't think it is, uh, but the crystal is a sapphire crystal. There is a mix of polished and uh, brushed links. This is rated for around 100 meters of diving, which again, I wouldn't trust because this is AliExpress and Pagani design. It has a screw down crown and uh, a date complication, which actually works quite well. I'm pretty happy with this watch, uh, with the exceptions of the cons I've mentioned before. The clasp is quite nice outside of the micro adjust. 
and uh, it fits a little bit too big because of the fact that the micro just doesn't work. For $80, you really can't get any better than this. And because I was just getting my foot in the door uh, and I wanted a nice automatic watch, this kind of does it for me. But again, um, I would say this is a watch to get. If you just want a cheap Seiko NH35 and there's no other access to other watches that have an equivalent note. I was looking for a chronograph and one of the main watches that everybody points to is the Seagull Chronograph. And personally, I was not willing to spend $300 on a watch that is may or may not be a ripoff. So I w decided to go for uh, a Mecha Quartz watch. And again, one of the cheapest ways to get a Mecha Quartz watch, the Sapphire Crystal with a ceramic bezel with solid uh, stainless steel links was the Pagani watch. This is a more homage version of the Rolex Daytona. It has a faux meteorite dial with three subdials. The legibility of this, not so great because the stick hands and the indices and the dial itself are kind of a similar shade. For the keen eyed amongst you, you'd probably notice that Rolex doesn't actually make a meteorite dial with a ceramic bezel. So again, that's just one of the caveats. I wasn't necessarily looking for this for the looks. It's $56 Canadian, which is significantly cheaper than most of the watches out there. And um, this has a Seiko VK63. In terms of the sweeping seconds hand, it sweeps relatively well, not as great as an automatic or an, a mechanical watch. Once you click on the dial or on these pushers, it has some tactile feedback, um, which is one of the benefits of having a Mega Quartz watch. Solid stainless steel link. The micro adjust is a lot easier on here. And uh, the subdials, not so useful to be honest. It has a 24 hour subdial on the left and a, or the right. And it, on the left, it has a 60 minute chronograph subdial, which is not very useful because you can't really tell how long things have gone by for the chronograph because you're kind of guessing because the intervals are so big. It's a five minute interval between each indice on the subdial. This fits under most uh, sleeves because it's 11 millimeters. Again, not super great looking on my wrist because it has a 50 millimeter lug to lug width and a 40 millimeter dial uh, width. Again, most important measurement I would say on uh, watches are the lug to lug width. So you should probably look out for that before buying a watch. I can totally see how someone wouldn't like this, but again, just for the everyday, I think it's totally fine. There's also a date complication on this, which the Rolex Daytona doesn't have. If you want me to go more in depth about this, I'm actually going to be posting some other videos, some individual reviews about each watch. It's just kind of an overview. And then I'll also actually be talking about the kind of problems with the watch world. There's a lot of them, but uh, the first one I'm probably gonna talk about is the homage problem. Let's move on to a watch that costs less in your coffee, seriously. This is the Santa Tank watch and it costs around $15 Canadian when it's not on sale, which means that it's around 13 or so dollars US and you can probably get it for cheaper. I think at this price point, having a more direct homage of a watch is a lot more acceptable because um, you're spending so little. You are getting a leather uh, band again questionable about how much leather is actually in this band, but I do have to say that it is supremely comfortable. It immediately conforms to your wrist. It kind of feels like leather. It's probably some sort of vegan leather of sorts. It also has a Cartier style clasp, like Cartier C. And if you're within this affordable watch community, you've probably seen this watch floating around. So I decided to pick it up. Uh, to see what all the fuss was about. And I truly understand um, why people have picked this up. This is not a serious spec monster at this price point. You don't really have a known movement and you don't have good materials. This is more for your dressy situations. I needed a dress watch. And so this one was the easiest way to get a nice looking dress watch. And prior to this watch, I really didn't understand the appeal of square watches. But you know what? I've watched enough Theo and Harris to understand that there is truly um, some appeal of having a squared off watch, especially for dress watches. There's no seconds hand, which is an immediate plus for me because you're not seeing that ticking seconds hand. The actual case of this watch 
not stainless steel, unfortunately. It's probably made of some sort of aluminum alloy or most likely brass alloy. And you also have a stainless steel back so your wrist doesn't turn green. This is probably gonna patina over time. If you don't like the look of it, you can probably just toss it out and uh, get a new one because it's gonna, it's so inexpensive. You could drop this into a lake and it wouldn't matter. It also has a fake cabochon, which apparently is just a cut sapphire crystal, which of course it's not real sapphire. It's probably some sort of plastic. Setting it once is good enough because this um, movement is relatively accurate and um, it is so light on the wrist. Uh, it is so thin and light compared to any other watch out there. Um, which is really nice because you do really just set and forget. I found that even in casual situations, this watch works. One of the things that most people say about sports watches is that they're super versatile, but I've actually found that dress watches seem to be more versatile than sport watches. I think the only reason that people don't like wearing dress watches in casual locations is just has business to do, just has to do with the price itself. When you're wearing an $11 watch, you really don't care about which situation you're getting this into. Again, 30 meters of water resistance, haven't tested that out. I've washed my hands with it on, it seems to be doing fine. Has uh, That's the end of my state of the collection. Uh, I will be posting some videos about the individual watches themselves. Uh, and uh, I really hope you enjoyed this watch review. Feel free to leave any comments, constructive feedback, any sort of feedback would be appreciated. I really appreciate you for watching it this far in. And uh, it would be really helpful if you, you know, share this video. It's completely free. Thank you so much. And I'll see you on another video on the time ticker. Bye.